Hello Kindred Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Zach Receivers of Longevity.com. This video is the first in an ongoing series on the hormonal and sexual health and reproductive health of both men and women. This video is focused on men, but the next video on my channel as part of this series will be focused on women and we'll be sort of doing the mirror side to the whole story of the top issues that affect your sex. So each video in whatever topic I'm covering for male or female health is beneficial for both sexes to watch and learn from because down the road you might have a wife, you might have kids, you might have a husband, you have other family members and you can share this information with them. You can put that information into practice in your home and hopefully get the best health possible for those around you and as well as yourself. So the number one thing for men that we're going to start off with, this is just sort of an introductory thing about talking about why we want to focus on male health and the current state of it in the world. At the core of all these issues is that testosterone levels are being affected negatively. A lot of people have a negative perception of testosterone. It has sort of a uh, bad rap in the public's eye because it is actually uh, falsely connected with a lot of negative traits in some instances. Um, that aside, what we're seeing largely is from these plummeting rates of testosterone levels in men worldwide, most, mostly in the developed nations, is increased risk of virtually every known chronic disease. And overall that leads to increased mortality. So I've got four links below which I'll get to during this video. I'll just say that's link number one below and you can check that out if you want the source and the reference for the things I'm talking about, if you want the scientific background for that. And link number one there just talks about how low testosterone affects your overall mortality. So you have increased rates of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, um, Alzheimer's. All these major diseases that affect people today can in many cases be connected with low testosterone levels. So if you have really robust levels of testosterone, that's free testosterone, you're going to be preventing those from coming about, or they play a role in preventing it. And by raising testosterone, in some cases, you can even uh, reverse these things along with other aspects of a healthy lifestyle. And in turn, a healthy lifestyle promotes these healthy hormone levels in your body as well. So some of the falsities that are attributed to testosterone is like increased crime rates, increased accidents, and behavior that exhibits uh, dangerous things that would increase death. Yes, there is attributes of testosterone increasing risk-taking behavior, uh, drunk driving, uh, bad driving, and all these other things can be connected or correlated with testosterone, but that doesn't mean everyone with high testosterone does those things. So when you combine someone with um, a personality type that is reckless, that doesn't have respect for themselves and for society, they're going to probably get into things like criminal behavior, uh, because they have that extra energy, that extra drive to do something. And because they're lost individuals, they're going to go to things that are harmful. Now, when you look at, for instance, the people with the highest drive in society, people running big corporations, uh, lawyers, doctors, people working uh, really high-stress jobs, they have high, robust testosterone levels in many cases that help negate the negative side effects and that gives them the drive, that gives them the leadership, that gives them these qualities that as a male you want to have if you want to live a fulfilling and a productive life. So that's just some food for thought uh, if you're sort of on the edge of kind of thinking testosterone is something that needs to be lowered in society. If that were the case we'd have a lot more docility, we wouldn't have people standing up for their rights one could even say that there might be powers that be that want to purposely lower testosterone levels in the general population so that people are more like sheep and can be easily controlled. And that unfortunately is a reality of what happens when this core hormone to male uh, masculinity is affected and lowered whether it's synthetically, dietarily, lifestyle, or genetically and that's why we want to start to turn this around and that's what these videos in this ongoing series and on that playlist on my channel address. So if you didn't know about it, there's actually a playlist on the main page of my YouTube channel which you can see if you just go there, there's a lot of playlists and one of them is 
male and female sexual slash uh, hormonal health, and that gives you sort of the whole list of videos that I've done up to date on these topics that can aid you in uh, bringing about better health in this regard. So some of the next things I'm talking about come from link number two below. Worldwide, men's sperm counts have dropped by 50% over the last 50 years. If you go even further back, it's an even larger drop. Also, testicular cancer rates have doubled in the last 20 years. And then, of course, everyone knows that prostate cancer risk is going up as well. So all of these things are connected with a variety of factors, but a major one of them being uh, increased chemical exposure uh, due to the extreme amount of chemicals that are released into our environment every year. I'll be doing future videos really narrowing in on the key chemicals and what you can do to minimize your exposure in one's own environment with the products you buy, uh, with the way you set your home up, as well as things you can do uh, dietarily and supplementarily to help remove these things from your body and also block yourself from taking in more of them. But the fact is, is that we're exposed to these things no matter what, and the results we see in these things, such as the lowered sperm counts, lowered testosterone levels, increased rates of a whole wide variety of cancers in both men and women, are all indicative of these uh, really toxic compounds. And as I will describe in this series, as well as other lifestyle factors as well, that we see changing in part due to the chemicals. We can almost say that these chemicals are the major culprit in all these issues. And so that's where we're going to start in the future videos in ways that we can address this. This video is mostly just to bring awareness to it and really sort of raise the alarms about the severity of the situation of both male and female health. Uh, some other things that are going on, if you want to check out link number three below, it's a documentary uh, that was done on the CBC, which is a broadcasting station here in Canada, and it talks about the disappearing male. So male birth rates of males worldwide are actually dropping. A major cause of this is that chemical exposure in the womb is much more detrimental to the male fetus than the female fetus, and so uh, male miscarriages are more likely to occur due to chemical exposure. In one scenario, uh, the town south of Sarnia, in my own uh, province here in Ontario, Canada, is a Indian reserve which is basically at the point where they're having more than two girls born for every one male. That is extremely imbalanced and shows the detrimental effects of uh, these chemicals. Unlike fish we see in the environment, everyone's heard that you know you get uh, DDT or bisphenol A and BPA in the water of some lakes and rivers. The male fish will literally turn into female fish and you have an abundance of female fish and not enough male fish in the uh, ecosystem. In humans, it's not quite happening like that. It's not like they're in the womb and uh, these male fetuses are morphing into females. It's actually that the males are dying off because of uh, greater exposure to these things. And this has resulted in a slightly beginning to see a difference worldwide, we're talking, not just in Sarnia, Ontario, or other parts of like very polluted pockets around the world, but worldwide we're seeing this change occur. And uh, this is very disturbing. It's not a good sign at all for our species as humans. It's something that people need to take into strong consideration about their own health and their future health of their generations to come. And that's um, really, again, just raising the alarm and getting people aware of these issues so that they can address them in their own lives. And if we want to begin to explore the mental and emotional impacts that uh, we see from these things, and we see it in everyday culture, but behind the scenes we are seeing four times more men committing suicide, or succeeding in committing suicide than women. And although it's well known that women attempt suicide twice as often as men, we're talking about people who are very depressed, men succeed with it four times as often. So that's 80% of suicides that end in someone dying are men. So what this tells us is that, and again, that's link number four, below. you can kind of see the interpretation of that. Um, there is a difference when someone actually succeeds in taking their life compared to someone who does it almost as like an outcry. And it's partly due to the lack of support in a social network that men do, simply don't have, but women do have. And this is another good example of sort of the crisis that is happening to masculinity in our culture. When you also factor in the attacks that are happening on men, 
both in the media and uh, academic circles when you consider the things that feminism brings up and sort of debasing men. I'm not going to address that in this video, but you can always subscribe to my vlogging channel here and I've got some videos on there. I do have some videos in the past on this channel about those issues, but personally I disagree with a lot of the um, tenets of feminism because they tend to be favoring the female side of equality and not addressing the areas where there actually is inequality against men. So personally I would like to see a world where inequality for both sexes are raised up and we have a better standards for that, but um, what I see in the world today is actually, at least in the developed world, in North American culture in particular, is that women are increasingly put on pedestals and men are increasingly sort of kicked in the dirt. When you look at things like the vast majority of people who are homeless are men and the amount of violence against men who are homeless is greater than the amount of violence against homeless women. There's uh, a glass basement that exists when people talk about the glass ceiling. You don't see women as garbage collectors. You don't see women doing the dirtiest jobs in the world, but you see men doing that. I'm not trying to complain here. I'm just putting out there that there is an issue, almost like a crisis of masculinity in the world today, which you as an individual can choose to uphold and change in yourself and be an example for others. And part of that is looking towards healthy role models of males, which we see more than ever in the health community, um, and avoiding taking in those unhealthy male role models that are basically, especially in the music industry, uh, coming about from a very negative base, almost criminal in some cases when you look at certain cultures and the types of behavior they display and are admired for. So if you like this content, again, check out that playlist on the main page of my channel. Check out the links below for some affiliate programs, which I highly recommend. There's products available there that can help with uh, any issues regarding hormonal and sexual health, as well as a great deal of many other things. And with that, like, favorite, and share the video, and subscribe if you haven't done that before. With that, take care and embrace life without limits.